Hey everybody, Ann here, sitting in front of the tiny house. I had coffee a while ago. I wasn't going to make a video today, but I'm going to go ahead and try and model through a video. Uh, the situation that I've been very stressed out about seems to be resolving. It was... I've been sick about it since I found out. Um... I, I'm still not going to give you the details because I don't want you to pile on, um, you know, and I don't want to tarnish a company's name or anything like that. Just know that I was sent a very disturbing notice that contained factually incorrect information, but when I saw it, I just couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around it because... If this notice that was sent to me was true, I was going to lose everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Everything. Everything that I've hoped and dreamed for for years was getting ready to evaporate. <clears throat> and all because of a clerical error on the other party's part. Their record keeping was, is shoddy and uh, I became very upset over it um, so I before I contacted the people involved um, of course I called my parents I talked to a couple of very good friends Francie from Finding Joy of course Miss Donna B I called my sister um, and I didn't even tell her what was going on I just wanted to hear her voice so we had a long talk and she just wanted to know about my chickens and what's going on out here and stuff. So it was a good conversation. So thank you, sister. Um, and then I posted a prayer request and you all prayed and I could feel it. And um, it's going to, I think it's going to be okay. I'll find out for sure tomorrow. Um, and I'll let you know what the end result is. But I think it's going to be cleared up. Um, faulty bookkeeping error and a um, not a miscommunication, a lack of communication, not on my part, but on theirs. Um, and I think it's going to be resolved. I think everything is going to be okay. I'm not calling out and asking for you guys to do anything or say anything or whatever. Um, your prayers have been enough, so I could feel them, and uh, they're, they've gotten me through. Many of you in that one community post posted some very special uh, Bible verses, and they were tremendously helpful, so thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I look around at everything that I've created. It may not be perfect. It may not look all that great. But it's mine, and I'm developing memories, just really good memories. And um, to even think for a second that I might lose that. <sighs> I was literally physically ill. <laughs> physically ill, but I think it's going to be okay. So I'll let you guys know for sure. And if it isn't going to be okay, if we cannot find a resolution to this, you can be assured that I will be sharing all documents, all communications, uh, the names of the individuals involved openly. But I'm thinking we're going to be able to find a resolution to this. I think it's going to be okay. I think it was an honest mistake on their part. So I've learned some things through this. Um, always, always get a receipt. The good thing is, is I pay almost everything. My arm's getting tired. I should have got the tripod. Sorry. I pay almost everything via PayPal, digital payments, and PayPal has very good record keeping. You know, it's it's never going away. It's not like somebody handwriting a receipt. It's it's in a digital format they have information about me on my end they have information about the individual who received the money 
on their end. Um, and it's more than just a piece of paper that says, look, you paid this. Um, so paying through PayPal, I think, is a good thing. Or through a bank or a credit card or something like that. Um, because you're always going to have a digital receipt. But in addition to that, you need to get on the phone and talk to people and make sure that every money you send out of your pocket is received and that they are keeping their records appropriately because you don't want to get to a point where you get a disturbing letter and you think your life is going to completely crumble and fall apart. And that's where I was at. I'm not completely over it all yet. There's one more conversation I need to have and then I think it's going to be okay. So there's that. I'll update you as time goes by. But there has been a development. And, uh, well, here, let me just show you. Look at that. You see anything different in there? Do you see anything in there? Nope, because there are no chickens in there. You want to know why? My next door neighbor's kids have been coming over. They love to feed the chickens and um, they just love chickens. And I kept telling them, you want some chickens? You know, I keep asking them, you want some eggs? And they're like, no, we've got enough eggs. I'm like, well, you, you want some chickens? And uh, they weren't ready for chickens. They had not built a coop yet. Well, um, my next new next door neighbor's kids came over and um, they said their daddy was building a chicken coop. And I'm like, oh. Do you guys want some chickens? And they're all, oh, well, not sure. He's not done yet. He needs some more stuff and needs to get this, that, and the other. Well, yesterday I saw Papa. I'm just going to, well, not Papa, Daddy. Um, Daddy neighbor come over with the four kids. And they were all so excited. And they said, he said, my kids have been bugging me about getting some chickens. And, you know, and I already told the kids when they came over that, you can have this whole flock over here. You can have Rocky, you can have Olive, you can have Splash, and you can have Raven. But I like to keep them together. Um, and I explained that they're very special chickens and they are very special chickens. Um, and so they all came up my drive and um, they wanted Rocky and his flock. So they got a big dog kennel up. Um, he had finished his chicken coop and rum run and um, we wrangled the chickens. All four kids got involved and it was kind of chaos there for a little bit. Raven got out and was free ranging for a little bit, but we all wrangled her back in and we, we got them into the dog kennel, all four chickens. And we had to lure them with some, you know, um, black soldier fi, uh, grub terra, the, the grub worms. And loaded them into the back of his truck, got some bungees. I gave him some um, chicken food for to get him through the next couple of days and some grit. And so he's got them over there in their coop, their new coop. He's going to keep them in the coop for probably about a week so that they can understand, you know, you know how that goes. They need to understand where they need to roost until he lets them out into the run. And then um, I don't know how long he's going to let them in the run until he lets them free range but the plan is to let them free range which is an awesome awesome decision so that brought me so much joy just to be able to do that and the kids they were looking at you know the um the chickens and one would say that's my chicken that's my chicken and i think they're going to get some more chickens some baby chicks from tractor supply company and i offered to lend them my little brooder box that has a little heat plate in it and whatnot they may end up getting their own brooding setup going but um i did offer to let them use mine so um and i get visitation rights they told me i get visitation rights so i get to go over and visit every once in a while um i've not been over there since but i figured i'm just gonna let them get settled in and enjoy their new chickens their new flock and this frees up rocky's pen area for the 12 new baby chicks. I mean 12. I don't know if 12 are going to hatch out. But Miss Pris is still sitting on the nest. She's still got 12 eggs. She gets off once a day. Um, to do her broody poop. <laughs> and get something to eat. And uh, take a dust bath. And stretch her legs. And then she. Yesterday it was so funny. She got into one of the chicken 
tub waterers that I just keep out and she got her feet in it and she's getting all cool and everything and then she got back up into the van and started sitting on her eggs again and so when she gets off the nest I'll go check the nest for um, you know a new egg and Coco always lays in the file cabinet and Roxy always lays in Miss Pris's new brooding area so I pull that egg out because I don't want her to even try and hatch out any more than 12 chickens so, however many hatch, and I don't know how many roosters there's going to be, and there may be one other rooster in her prior brood, um, aside from Torch. So, we'll have to see what's going to go on with that. But, it's going to free that whole area up for this new batch of chickens. Once Miss Pris gets them to be big enough and they've, they've got their enough feathers so that she doesn't have to, you know, huddle over them and whatnot. So, um, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. It just, and I heard Rocky crowing over there last night after he went over there. I heard him crowing again this morning. So I think he's getting settled in just fine. And I don't know, I've had so much given to me, so many blessings from all of you and your prayers and you watching my videos and, you know, making comments and talk about the comment situation in here, here in a minute. But um, I've been so blessed that for me to be able to bless somebody else like that, it brought me a tremendous amount of joy. So, yay. Anyhow, about the comment situation, Mary's uh, comments are still being deleted unless she makes a comment on one of my community posts. She's taken all measures to be able to make her comments be seen, but I, it has nothing to do with anything she's done or not done. It is YouTube randomly selecting people to delete, and unfortunately, she's been hit the hardest. Now, I don't know how many other comments have been deleted that uh, people have left that aren't showing up because I don't check every single one. I've just been very mindful about her because I keep noticing her notifications for her comments yet they're not showing up and this affects my bottom line it does um, everything that is involved in YouTube's algorithm to promote a video to recommend it more has to do with views um, votes either up or down um, people leaving comments and how long they watch the video and all of that kind of stuff. So if you have fewer comments in your comment section, you are going to be downranked. It's going to look like you your video is, is not as um, watchable. Uh, it's not going to be rated high up in the algorithm, so you're not going to get recommended. If you don't get recommended, then people aren't, people aren't going to watch your videos and um, you're not going to make any money. And so since I would say about June or July, I've noticed that my YouTube revenue has decreased by about half. And that's a big deal. Um, and I can't help but wonder how many other people have posted comments and they're not showing up. And this really bothers me because, well, they may think I'm deleting their comments and they may think I don't want them on my channel and this is not the case at all. Uh, so, like I said yesterday at the uh, the pinned comment in yesterday's video, if you post a comment and it doesn't show up or it disappears, I want you to email me at annstinylife at protonmail.com. Uh, the first part, Anne's Tiny Life, all lowercase, all one word, at protonmail, all one word, dot com. Uh, let me know which video it was. If you can screen cap or even copy and paste or whatever um, the comment or just paraphrase it to, to what you think it was, uh, just send that information to me and then I will forward that on to YouTube. Um, they are not addressing this. This has been going on. Um, I mean, it's going on. It's been going on for years, but then they kind of fixed it. And then it started happening again at the beginning, uh, beginning of July. Um, really bad, really bad. So this needs to get fixed and I'll do what I can to get it fixed because really um, YouTube is my livelihood and my livelihood is being taken away from me because of YouTube's faulty algorithm, their faulty ability to um, 
recognize what is a spam comment and what is not a spam comment. And they're hurting people. So this needs to be fixed. Um, in the meantime, you can help me by watching my videos, leaving comments, commenting to each other. Um, don't, don't be spammy or anything like that, but watching the videos all the way through. And I, I realize there are, I'm going to call them interruptions in the video. Um, some of them can be quite long. I've seen some of these interruptions that last an hour. And no one should ever be expected to watch those interruptions all the way through just to help a channel. I think that if you watch at least 30 seconds of these interruptions, it counts. So um, if you can just do that. You know, and I, I would never tell you to click on something that you're not truly interested in because YouTube will pick up on that. If you click, you know, one interruption and you click another interruption, um, they're going to know and they will pull that revenue back from me and you could jeopardize my ability to monetize my channel as a whole. Anyhow, um, all right, so I've been talking this segment for almost 10 minutes so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this video here anyway thank you for the prayers guys that's all I got for you guys today see you in the next video Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell, and y'all have a good one.